Thanks. Well, Charlie, 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 I thought I'd get a better life out of than that. Maybe I better hush. I better hush and move on. <laughs> Goodness gracious! Hallelujah! Matthew chapter number sixteen. Matthew chapter number sixteen in your Bibles tonight. Well, I'm I'm thrilled. I'm honored to be here uh, with you. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been to the uttermost part of the earth. <laughs> And so, I, I, I asked your pastor how to get here. He said, go to the uttermost part of the earth, turn left. It's about four miles just past that. You, you, can, stand, you can stand if you want to. But I, I am honored to be here uh, tonight, and I greatly, greatly appreciate the opportunity. Appreciate your pastor, uh, who he is, what he stands for, and uh, what he is... Uh, trying to carry on here in this community and uh, it, it, it is truly it's truly an honor it's truly an honor there are there are men here much 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 more qualified than I and uh, and would do a, a much better job than I and I'm, I'm humbled I'm, I'm humbled and honored at the same time uh, to stand before you and so the, the Lord being our helper uh, I just uh, I pray that I pray that he would. That's I I, I told the Lord to hear an altar and just a few minutes ago. Lord, I don't know what else to ask you but to help me. <laughs> Lord, just help me, help me, help me. And so uh, I, I, I'm trusting that he has that he has heard my prayer. A few things I've learned about myself is I am a simple man and I am a simple preacher. Uh, it was it was a good day early on when I figured out that I didn't have to impress nobody. And uh, I, guess, I guess a lot of young folk, maybe uh, that's what the Apostle Paul said when he spoke of a novice. Uh, you know, uh, that I'm not going to tell you anything new tonight. Uh, I, I'm really, I, I'm going to preach about of a simple of a message as I've ever preached before. It, it is, I'm not going to tell you anything probably that you've never heard before. But you've heard Amazing Grace before, and I have too, and it does something for me, and it does something different for me almost every time I hear it. There's a different phrase in that song that means something, that means something different to me every time, every time that I hear it. And so, uh, again, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be real, real simple. I want to get back to the basics tonight. I'm going to give you some milk if I can. I'm gonna try to say. I asked the Lord. So, Lord, just let me set the table. I, you got some. You got some great men that I know coming in. Uh, I know you had a, a great man last night uh, with you, Brother Bradley. And, and I'm. Uh, I, I just asked the Lord. Lord, let me set the table and give a little appetizer. Have give him a little taste of milk. And Lord, uh, Lord, uh, help me to do that. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be real simple. I don't think I'm gonna be short. But I am going to be simple. <laughs> Amen. Amen. No, I'm going to be, I'm going to be mindful of the time. Lord be in our help. Matthew chapter number 16, verse number 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Son of Man, most common name that Jesus used for Himself. Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist. Some, Elias, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the Son of the living God. Thou art the Christ, 
the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Notice that phrase, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If we were to ride up the road here, just a, just a few minutes, and go to Western Carolina University, and we were to go to the philosophy department, and we were to sign up for one of their academic courses, maybe an introduction to a philosophy course, we would get to know a concept, and this doesn't mean anything to me, it might not, probably doesn't mean anything to you. We would, we would learn about a concept called ipso facto. The fact by itself is what it means. And basically what, what, that, what that Latin phrase means, it, it, it's, a, it's a study of logic. And here's what it means. If one thing is true, that makes another thing true. Okay? If one thing is true, another thing is true. If there's a negative, there has to be a positive. If there's up, there has to be down. If one thing is true, another thing has to be true. Jesus said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Against what? Against my church. That's our context. Against my church. So, if we use that, if we use that logic, if we will... If the gates of hell are not going to prevail against the church, then the fact is, the truth is, the church is going to prevail against the gates of hell. Amen? I will, I will be real simple tonight. This is, here's my thought. The priorities of a prevailing church. The priorities of a prevailing church. Let's pray one more time. Lord, we love you. We thank you for loving us. Lord, I've, I've prayed early in the day. I've prayed back in the prayer room. I've prayed in this altar one more time before I open the Scripture and get to my thoughts. And Lord, and get to Your Word, I pray one more time. God, would You help me, please? Lord, help us together as an audience, as a church, Lord, as a congregation, Lord, to hear what thus saith the Lord. Lord, regardless of my commentaries, my thoughts, Lord, uh, uh, my philosophy is anything like that. Lord, I pray I'd stay in your book, stay in your word, and preach exactly what thus saith the Lord. Lord, help me to get it out like you've put it in. Lord, I love you. I only love you because you first loved me. Pray in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Thank, thank you so much for standing. You can be seated. I, I know, I, I'm, as, I look over, as I look over at the crowd here a little bit, I, it looks like I know about somewhere between 60 and 70 percent of you. Those of you that don't know me, by trade, I, I'm, a, I'm a deputy sheriff. I work for the sheriff's office over in, over in Transylvania County. One of my responsibilities is I am the administrator over our detention center. I'm the captain over the jail. Now, we do a lot of different things at our jail, in, in, in the detention facility, that we, that we do uh, for our inmates. We make sure that they get to their appointments, that they get to the doctor, that they get proper medical treatment, that they're, that they're fed properly, that they get the minimum number of calories per day, that, uh, that, they, that they get a chance to exercise, that they, they, they have an opportunity to finish their GED if they want to. They have, they have an opportunity to, to go to Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous, to go to rehab. And, and, and we're, we, get to, we get to be involved in a lot of good, a lot of good things and a lot of important things there at, at the facility. The things that is kind of my, kind of sort of, I guess you could say, is my responsibility. But when you boil it down to it, really, and you narrow it down, we, we've got basically two priorities. There's two things, there's a lot of good things that we're doing, but there's two things that we have to do. Two priorities. Nobody dies, nobody escapes. That's pretty much it. <laughs> that's really 
all we've got to do. Nobody dies. Nobody escapes. It's a pretty good day. Pretty good day. Right? Kind of like being a substitute teacher. <laughs> if no, <nobody, laughs> That's what Coach Fox told me one time. <laughs> kind of like being a substitute teacher. Good day. Nobody dies. Nobody escapes. Good day. Good day. Just a few, just a few months ago, I, I had a couple of employees who got preoccupied who, who got preoccupied with, with some good things, some good things that they were doing. And they, they nearly made a catastrophic error. Now, nobody died, nobody escaped, so it worked out in the long run. But I had to take an opportunity as, as the leader, as being, as being responsible for that facility to say, hey, hey, we've got to keep the main thing the main thing. We've got to get right make sure when we're taking care of the good things that we're not missing the priorities well you know a church is is much the same way we there there's an opportunity to be in, involved in all kinds of different things I, I find it i find in my travels and going different going different places and things like that every church seems seems to kind of have its its own little niche you know, there are certain things that your church will do that maybe the church just down the road doesn't. Boy, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be awful, be boring, be kind of, if we were all just exactly alike. And, and praise the Lord, we all, get to, we all get to do different things. You take, you take my church. There, there, there are many things. We, we, get, we have the opportunity, God blessed us, that we get to do certain things. But every church doesn't have a radio station. But you know what we don't have? We don't have a choir. I love choir music. I love it. But the dynamics of our church and the schedules of different people who are working and different, we, we just, we don't have, we don't have a choir. I, well, I wish we had a choir. We don't have one. We don't have one. And I, and, and I can go on and on and on. But there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of good things that we can be involved in. But, it, but if, boy, if we're not careful, if we're not careful, We'll, we'll, miss, we'll miss keeping the main thing the main thing. And we'll get, we'll get our priorities out of whack and out of order if we're, if we're not right real careful. And that's really the theme of my message tonight, of what I want to say. Again, again, it, it, it's real simple. Back, let's get back to the basics. Let's, let's be reminded, let's be reminded of night to keep the main thing the main thing, and remember what our priorities are as a church, as a church member, as an individual Christian. What are, what are our priorities? Priority number one. Priority number one is to exalt the Savior. That's number one. That is first and foremost. If you have, a, if you have a, a reference Bible, a study Bible here in front of you like, like I do, at, at, at the beginning of verse number 13, you may have something that says something similar to mine where it says, Peter's confession. And the fir- or, or maybe a couple, couple of verses down, the first mention of the church. Boy, I, I think a lot about Peter. Think a lot about Peter. He was a character, was he not? He was something. I wonder. I wonder oftentimes if Peter didn't buy his shoes according to the taste, because he had an awful bad habit of opening mouth and insert foot. He he sometimes he, the filter just didn't work, right? The filter just didn't work. If it came to mind, it came to mouth. We can we can turn one page to Matthew 17, and boy, he blew it there on the mount. Of transfiguration, boy, he me- he 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 messed up. He messed up really, really good right there. Jesus puts puts for just a few for just a few moments. Jesus puts back on that robe of glory and reveals himself in a glorified state. The Son of Man is the Son of God, and He's God the Son. He's the great God of glory, the Creator of the universe. And he reveals himself, and there with him, Elijah, Moses. Peter says, "Well, I got a great idea. Got a great idea. Let's build three tabernacles: one for Elijah, 
and one for Moses. And Jesus, while we're at it, we'll go ahead and build one for you too. <laughs> Blew it. Hey, God shared His Son with the entire world. God is going to share His heaven with anybody and everybody that puts their faith and trust in His Son. Amen. He will not, He will not share His glory. He will not share His glory. You want a good, you want a good definition of a cult, of a false religion, of a false prophet? Anybody or anything that takes themselves or something else and places it on the same level as Christ. Or anybody or anything or, that takes Christ and brings, them, and brings Him down to another level. That's, that right there is your definition of a cult. Hey, Peter got it right there in, verse, in, in chapter number 16. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Not the Virgin Mary, not the angel Marconi, not Joseph Smith, not the Pope. Hey, Christ did not commission the Apostle Peter here to be the Pope. Hey, who, who is he? Thou art the Christ. Thou and thou on. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Hey, let's put, a, put a, a great priority. Priority number one is to exalt the Savior. To exalt the Savior. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter number 3, verse number 20, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. What's verse 21 say? Unto Him be, unto Him be glory, where? Where? In the church. Hey, if we could do anything, if you could have any desire whatsoever, I'm sure... As, as a pastor of the Wolf Creek Baptist Church, you've got some goals. You've got some plans. You've got some things to, that you, you, you may have something you want to see within five years, something you want to see if, if the Lord doesn't come in, in ten years. Boy, one of, one, of the, one of the first priorities should be, I want the Wolf Creek Baptist Church to be known as a church that exalts the Savior of all the things that we're doing, of all of the good things that we're doing, of all of the important things that we're doing, we must exalt the Savior. Priority number one. Priority number one is to exalt the Savior. Jesus called John the Baptist the greatest man that ever lived. Not a man born of woman greater than John the Baptist. You know what John the Baptist said? John 3.30, He must increase. And I must decrease. We've got to place a priority on exalting the Savior. A priority on exalting the Savior. Jesus said this about Himself, and, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Now, He's speaking about His, he's speaking about his crucifixion. He's speaking about His death there. There's practical application there. Boy, if we lift Him up, we'll draw... Hey, we was back here in the prayer room... <coughs> Man after man, boy, I got a lost loved one, got a lost coworker, got a lost friend, got a lost neighbor. Need to be saved. Well, pray that souls will be saved. Hey, you know what, you want souls to be saved? Priority number one: exalt the Savior. Somebody's going to be saved. It's going to have to be accomplished by the Savior. Exalt the Savior. Boy, Peter got that right. Jesus said that about himself. He said, "Upon this rock, not upon Peter." Peter, Simon, Simon means a big, a big rock. Simon, flesh and blood hadn't revealed it to you. But old Peter, that's little rock. Little stone right there. I, I can't help but wonder, the Bible doesn't say this. All I can do is speculate. I don't have, I, I can't say, but I, I, just, I just wonder, I just wonder if Jesus didn't say upon this rock, if he didn't maybe tap himself on the chest or the shoulder, upon this rock, upon this rock, I will build my church. The Bible talks much about him being that cornerstone, that chief cornerstone about that rock. Upon this rock, I will build my church. Hey, we must be, we must be about exalting the Savior. If we're going to have our priorities in order, if we are going to get back to the basics, if we're going to keep the main thing, the main thing, if we want to be a prevailing church, 
If we want to be a prevailing church, priority number one is to exalt the Savior. To exalt the Savior. Priority number two. I told you it's simple. I told you I'm simple. Priority number two. To expound the Scripture. Priority number two is to expound the Scripture. Our, our story, our, our, our text and our context here begins out with Jesus asking that question about whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And we, we, really, we find that, he, that Jesus is confused with, with a couple of different folks, three different folks, and then the prophets. John the ba- Why John the Baptist? Who, who was John the Baptist? Well, he was, that, he was that voice of one crying in the wilderness. He was a preacher. He was a preacher. How do you reckon Jesus preached to 5,000 men besides their women and children? But that's what He was doing just before He fed them. So if we do, if we do a little bit of quick math, we, we might can say that Jesus was preaching to maybe 20, 25,000 people at one time. Now, we, we get this concept a lot of times. We get it from Hollywood movies. Sometimes we get it from Bible school and Sunday school material and you know, different types of artwork. We, we, see, we see Jesus as a, he's a, a, you know, with his nice flowing, long, hippie hair, right? And he's kind of sitting in a dewy meadow with a lamb in his in his lap and good God, good devil, good world, good sin, love. Hey, Jesus was a preacher. He placed a high priority on expounding the scriptures, on preaching the word. He expects us to do the same thing. A priority on expounding the scripture. He was mistaken for John the Baptist because of his powerful preaching. He was mistaken for Elijah because of his marvelous miracles. Because of his marvelous miracles. He had an awful bad habit of breaking up funerals. (laughs) Putting doctors out of business. Need a refund. (laughs) Mr. Undertaker, need a refund. But, but we did your funeral. Yeah, you did my funeral last week. The services have not been rendered. It didn't take. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Had an awful bad habit of that. His marvelous miracles. His powerful preaching. And then what about Jeremiah? Who was Jeremiah? Was it his, that weeping prophet. Not only that powerful preaching and, that mar- and those marvelous miracles, but that compassionate care. That compassionate care. Shortest verse in your King James Bible, in your English Bible. Jesus wept. Do you realize Jesus wept knowing He's about to raise Lazarus from the dead? You ever thought about that? He wept knowing what He's about to do. He knew when he talked to Martha, he's going to raise Lazarus from the dead. He knew when he talked to Mary, he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. He knew when he said, I am the resurrection and the life, he knew he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead, and he wept anyway because of his compassionate care. We know John eleven thirty five. Do we know John eleven thirty six? When the Jews looked upon him, they said, Behold how He loved Him. That compassionate care. Those marvelous miracles. That powerful... What all these men have in common? John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. Preaching! They're preachers! God places a high priority in His church. If we're going to be a prevailing church, if we're going to be a, a Philadelphian church in the middle of a Laodicean church age, we got to place a high priority on expounding the Scriptures. Expounding the Scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 said this, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach 
The gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Listen here, verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Most of Jackson County thinks we've lost our minds. Most of Transylvania County thinks that we've gone clinically insane. It's Monday night. We've only got a couple of weeks before school starts back, before football season starts. Boy, you could be at the lake fishing. You could be in Asheville at the tourist at the baseball game. You could be camping. You could be doing this. You could be doing that. What's wrong with you? Here you sit on a Monday evening. You could be mowing the grass. You got a wool suit on, a long sleeve shirt, and at one of these goofy choke collars. What in the world is wrong with you? The folks that are perishing, this is foolishness what we're doing here tonight. This is foolishness. Boy, I like this next phrase. It tickles me every time that I read it. But unto us which are saved. S-A-V-E-D. Unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. It's the power of God. Hey, Jackson County thanks for crazy. Transylvania County thanks for crazy. Western North Carolina, these United States of America, most of the world, all of the world thinks that we are crazy. Foolishness! But we know, we know, we trust and we believe what we're doing here tonight is the power of God. It is the power of God. Much, 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 much more I could say about that. Let me, let me, let me say something about, about your pastor. About some things that are important. Every pastor, excuse me, let me back, let me rephrase this. Every preacher is not a pastor. Every preacher is not a pastor. But every pastor better be a preacher. If you're going to be a Philadelphian church in a Laodicean age, better have a pastor that's a preacher. Got a lot of Laodicean churches out there. And I'm afraid, hey, it doesn't usually begin with contemporary music. It rarely begins at the piano. It rarely begins with the dress standards. It almost always begins in the pulpit. Almost always begins in the pulpit. Wolf Creek, you you have a pastor that is a preacher. You ought to thank God for him. You ought to pray for him. You ought to Aggie him all. Sick him, Lord. Sick him. Hey, you get back there when he's standing there at the back door. Pastor, thank you for preaching to my family. Pastor, you might preach me to the altar, but you'll not preach me to the house. God places, God places a high priority in His church on expounding the Scriptures. On expounding the Scriptures. Priority number one, to exalt the Savior. Priority number two, to expound the Scripture. I can say a whole lot more. Second time I won't. Priority number three, to edify the saints. Priority number three, to edify the saints. We're doing something important tonight by simply being together. Very, very important. One of the things the devil has done in the last 17 months. Boy, hadn't it been a rough 17 months? It seemed, I was talking to, my, you know, talking to my wife about, well, we hadn't seen such and such since when. No, it hadn't been. It's been, we, we lost a year. I mean, we lost a year, gone. One of his greatest victories. He is, he, he's winning a battle every now and then. The, the war, the outcome of the war has already been determined. Amen? Well, the outcome of the war has already been determined. The gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. But every now and then a battle is won. And breaking that fellowship and keeping us apart is one of those battles that I fear that I fear that he's likely that he's likely won. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter four, verse eleven. 
He's talking about spiritual gifts. And He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. God places a high priority on us being together and edifying one another, edifying the saints. You're very familiar with this verse. I'm sure you've heard it quite a bit in the past 17 months, if not, if not longer. Hebrews 10.25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but what? But exhorting one another. Exhorting one another. And then he doesn't stop there. He says, he says, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. The closer that we get to the coming of the Lord, to the rapture of the church, of to the end of this world as we know it. The writer here says, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, the closer we get to the end, go down to the church house, unlock the doors, turn the lights on, and go to church more. Assemble more. Fellowship more. Exhort one another more. We're getting closer to the end. Clo hey, more and more and more. Boy, thank God for revival effort on Monday night. Hey, get, turn the lights on. Unlock the doors. Get the air conditioner going. Let's go to church. Let's go to church and exhort one another more. My son played Little League Baseball this past, this past year. And uh, Brother Allen knows Big Dan. I call him Big Dan because he's, he's got such a big heart. He is about as easy going and laid back. He'll live to be 120. <laughs> Nothing bothers him. Nothing bothers him. So he played, he played Little League Baseball. And uh, they have certain rules that they do. And uh, one night, one, one late Monday night, one, one of the rules is time limits. It's time limits. And so one late Monday night, we got to our time limit. And they said, all right, that's it. Game over. That's it. Everybody pack up and go home. Good job. Game over. One problem. The score's tied. The score is tied. <laughs> go home. Game over. Go home. Wait a minute. The score. No, we're not going home. The score's tied. The score's tied. What you, I didn't take my, my sister to the prom. I'm not satisfied. Hey, I'm not satisfied with a tie score. I don't like participation trophies. The score, we're not going, what are you talking about? And here's, here's my son. Here's my son going around. Going around to everybody. Say, hey, at least we didn't lose. I'm like, at least we didn't, at least we didn't lose. Yeah, going around, pat, tap, patting everybody on the back. Well, at least we didn't lose. At least we didn't lose. The more he says it, the madder I'm getting. There's smoke coming out my ears. I'm boiling. Man, the fun's in the winning. That's where the fun's at. The fun is in the winning. And I'm ranting and ranting. I said, what do you mean? What do you mean we didn't lose? You didn't win? What are you talking about? And so we get in a truck, and my, my 15 minute ride from Pisgah Forest to Cherryfield, my house, took about eight minutes. <laughs> we pulled in the driveway. I slammed on the brakes. I threw that truck up in the park. And I noticed Dan, and I'm ranting and raving the whole way home. <laughs> I'm noticing my son, Minnie Me. He's looking out the window. He ain't said a word. He's looking out the window. He's kind of whimpering a little bit. Tears pulled up in his eyes. I said, son, what's wrong with you? 
He said, Dad, all I was trying to do was encourage my teammates. Some of them simple messages are some of the toughest to swallow. Well, that was a, he preached to me a very, very simple message. He got out of the truck. And I sat there in the dark, tears rolling down my face. Little still small voice of the Holy Spirit said, you know, you want him to be more like you? I wish you were more like him. Need some folks to encourage your teammates. You know what Pastor Alan Johnson needs? He needs some folks to encourage teammates. Brother Patrick, you know what you need down there at Soul Creek? Need some folks to encourage your teammates. Preacher, I, 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 my, physically my best days are behind me. I, can't, I cannot do this and I cannot do that. That's okay. Need some folks to encourage the teammates. I, I, can't, I can't go on a mission trip. I can't travel to a third world country. That's okay. That's okay. We need some people that encourage our teammates. God places a priority, and so should we, on the edification of the saints. On the edification of the saints. We're going to keep the main thing the main thing. If we're going to have our priorities right, if we're going to be a Philadelphian church in a Laodicean age, we've got to have certain priorities. Number one is to exalt the Savior. Number two is to expound the Scripture. Number three is to edify the saints. Number four, and I'm done. I need to evangelize the sinner. We must evangelize the center. Our society places a premium, and I, th I think we should to a degree, on famous last words. We, we go back and we study the last words of certain, pe certain great people in history and different things like that. And, Just a couple weeks ago, my mom said her last words. And her last words were something like this. I'm ready. Come get me. His grace is sufficient. There's plenty of grace to go around. I'm ready. I'm ready. Those last words are going to comfort me for the rest of my life. The rest of my dad's life. Last words that Jesus told us was to evangelize the sinner. Put a priority on it. Matthew recorded it like this. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me, heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Mark recorded it like this. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Every time I hear that, I hear Stenet Blue screaming out, Every creature needs a preacher. Every creature needs a preacher. Go into all the world, preach the gospel. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth shall be damned. Dr. Luke, Acts 1.8, recorded it like this. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Last words. Hey, he didn't leave here he didn't leave this world as a dead Savior. He left this world as a victorious Savior, as a risen Savior. But he, left, but he did leave this world. He gave us some standing orders. The last thing that he said 
evangelize the sinner. Evangelize the sinner. There, there's a story. Some of you probably know it. The last Japanese soldier to surrender, thus ending World War II, was a man by the... Let me see if I can get this right. Hiru Anoda. He had been placed on the islands of the Philippines. Set There's a chain. The Philippines is a chain of 7,000 islands. Had, to, had a chance to go there about three and a half years ago. Looking forward to going back soon. He was on one of those islands and he was occupying a cave. Those were his, those were his orders. He was, in effect, the last Japanese soldier to surrender, ending World War II. He handed over, when he was captured and found, he handed over his sword to President Ferdinand Marcos on March the 9th, 1974. March the 9th, 1974. 29 years after the emperor officially surrendered. Of course, there was a great media conclave. Why? Why? What kept you there so long? Why did you keep what help what why did you keep going? Why did you keep occupying? Why did you keep doing what you were doing? His answer was standard. His answer was the same. And his answer was simple. Those were my last orders. Those were my last orders. Church, I wish I had something really profound that's going to blow you away, something that you've never heard before. With all of the good things that we're doing, with all of the important things that we're doing, with all of the great things that we're doing, we've got to keep the main thing the main thing. We've got to get our priorities in the proper order and in the proper perspective. Hey, you might be busy. You might be doing something. You might be occupying. You might be doing something good. You probably are doing something good. Hey, we're here, we're here on a Monday night. This is, I'm, this is the core of the church, the core of the community. These are, these are the good folk. These, these are the people that want, you want to be. You don't come to church on Monday night in August if you don't want to come to church. If we're going to have revival, when pastor says we're going, we're, we're going to have revival, what he means is, is we're going to make an effort. We're going to do our part. God's going to do, we know, under the authority and the promise, we can trust God's work. God will do His part. We've got to do our part. What, it, what is revival? Is it, is it shouting? Is it, is it emotional experience? Here in just a few weeks, here in just a few weeks, when Clemson, when, when Clemson kicks off against Georgia, I'm going to have an emotional experience. But it's not going to do anything for me that lasts. Revival is when we're conformed to His image, when we are transformed into the image of Christ, and it's a life-changing experience. Your priorities in order? Your priorities in order? Every head bowed, every eye closed? The word church, the Greek word, it means ecclesia. It means a called out group. A called out group of people. Groups of people are made up of individuals. The message is simple. The message is simple. Are your priorities in order? Are you keeping the main thing the main thing? Pastor, come give the invitation.
it just done. Where you put that post? Because I need to get washed down to breathe. How important it is. Because it carried on what generations before us have done. Preaching the word. Doing the things that, that Brother Jeremy brought to us tonight, brought to our attention tonight. You say, what you said earlier. talking to Preacher Barton there before the sheriff on and she told him like I'd read something about the John Phillips and he said do what you can God for the rest God's not done yet he's not through he's not defeated Father, Lord, we thank you once again for this day. Lord, we thank you for uh, this evening. Lord, we thank you for the message. Thank you for Brother Jerry, God. God, I pray that you continue to bless him, Lord. Lord, I pray, God, you help us, Lord, keep our priorities where they need to be. Lord, I, I look at some around, times around in my own life. I see sometimes I go in a certain direction or go another way. Lord, I pray, God, you just I use that still, small voice in our hearts, God. You guide us and lead us. You said, Lord, if we, if we acknowledge you with all our ways, Lord, you guide our steps. And Lord, I pray you do that. Lord, I pray, God, for this church right here, Brother Adam, I pray that you keep the blessed in, Lord, Lord, I pray, God, that you send that revival. We, as a country, God, we need a revival. Lord, as, as I look around and see the chaos and all the things and stuff that's happening, Lord, uh, Lord I, I, and I, I just ponder sometimes, Lord, if we just get our eyes and set our affection on things above, God. Lord, I pray you help us do that, God, as a nation, as churches, as individuals, as families, God. Lord, we just pray that, Lord, we need you, Lord, in this day and time. 
Lord, I pray, God, that uh, you just watch over us and bless us, Lord, until we can get to, uh, together again. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.